Before we get started, I have a quick favor. I've been self-funding the Finding Genius podcast for five years now. I've done over 3,000 episodes. And as you can see on YouTube, we're up over a million views on the channel, which is fantastic. The next thing I really want to push on is to get up to 10,000 subscribers. Because once we do, we'll be able to put a donate button and uh, we'll be able to solicit donations to help keep the podcast running and to also get the Finding Genius Foundation moving along. We have a big project studying anxiety, depression, and PTSD and working on a product to help people overcome these problems because I've seen them explode recently after the, the last two years of the whole virus situation. So if you would, please subscribe to the podcast. That would help us tremendously give us a thumbs up and check in the description for buy me a coffee it's about five bucks if you could buy me a coffee i'd really appreciate it. it would help keep the channel going and i love coffee thank you before we get started i have a quick favor i've been self-funding the finding genius podcast for five years now i've done over three thousand episodes and as you can see on youtube we're up over a million views on the channel which is fantastic the next thing I really want to push on is to get up to 10,000 subscribers. Because once we do, we'll be able to put a donate button and uh, we'll be able to solicit donations uh, to help keep the podcast running and to also get the Finding Genius Foundation moving along. We have a big project studying anxiety, depression, and PTSD and working on a product to help people overcome these problems uh, because I've seen them explode recently after the, uh, you know, the last two years of the whole virus situation. So if you would, please subscribe to the podcast. That would help us tremendously. Give us a thumbs up. And check in the description for Buy Me a Coffee. It's about five bucks. If you could buy me a coffee, I'd really appreciate it. It would help keep the channel going. And I love coffee. Thank you. Forget frequently asked questions. Common sense. Common knowledge. Or Google. How about advice from a real genius? 95% of people in any profession are good enough to be qualified and licensed. 5% go above and beyond. They become very good at what they do. But only 0.1%. A real Jesus. Richard Jacobs has made it his life's mission to find them for you. He hunts down and interviews geniuses in every field. Sleep science, cancer, stem cells, ketogenic diets, and more. Here come the geniuses. This is the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Before we continue, I've been personally funding the Finding Genius Podcast for four and a half years now which has led to 2,700-plus interviews of clinicians, researchers, scientists, CEOs, and other amazing people who are working to advance science and improve our lives and our world. Even though this podcast gets 100,000-plus downloads a month, we need your help to reach hundreds of thousands more worldwide. Please visit FindingGeniusPodcast.com and click on Support Us. We have three levels of membership from $10 to $49 a month, including perks such as the ability to see ahead in our interview calendar, and ask questions of upcoming guests, transcripts of podcasts you're interested in, the ability to request specific topics or guests, and more. Visit FindingGeniusPodcast.com and click support us today. Now, back to the show. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius Podcast. I have uh, what uh, she's known as the Famous Mommy. Uh, her name is Jay, and she has a YouTube channel, The Famous Mommy, if you look up on YouTube there. And we're going to talk about uh, some of the breastfeeding education that she's been been dealing with and um you know how that affects new moms and how that affects their families and how it even affects uh you know our communities and our earth and, and everyone around us so jay thanks for coming thank you for having me i'm excited to be here well great tell me a bit about your your background how did you decide to start your youtube channel and get into these subjects you know believe it or not when my first was born my first baby was born i thought oh i'm just going to document our lives and i wasn't even a full-on breastfeeding mother at the time. When I first had my firstborn, they gave her formula in the hospital against my wishes, and we had a very rough time with establishing exclusive breastfeeding, unfortunately, and or chest feeding, whatever it is you'd like to call it. So I just wanted to document our lives. I was posting cute videos of me feeding her with a bottle. I was pumping. I was teaching about how I have to pump the breast milk in order to get her to drink any of it because she is nipple confused and would like the bottle more than the breast because of what the hospital did uh, by feeding her formula through a bottle with uh, against my wishes. It was not, I was not consensual. <laughs> That's terrible. So, you know, that led a lot to like, you know, a little postpartum depression and things. But throughout my journey, 
I thought, oh, what better way than to help other mothers? I wasn't, I didn't even know I could make money on YouTube at this time. I thought, what a great way to help other mothers learn about the difficulties I'm going through with my child, the fun times I'm going through. Also, like my firstborn, she had a flat head because she had really bad reflex from reflux, uh, gastrointestinal reflux, where she would spit up all the time. So she had that really bad and she would lay on her back a lot, like up in like a sitting position so that she wouldn't constantly throw up on herself. And it was from the formula and she got this, this flat head. So she had to wear a helmet on her head. And I thought, oh my gosh, she looks so cute in the helmet. I would love to teach, you know, families about the helmet. So I did that as well. So that's kind of how I did. It's just like me following the birth of my baby, then the birth of my second baby, which I filmed the entire birth and the, the differences about the births, what I experienced pain wise, what I experienced having an epidural, how it was giving birth to two children, one with gestational diabetes. I had gestational diabetes when I was pregnant with my second one. So I kind of just wanted to film our lives you know, and have that as a backup for me. And all of a sudden, boom, YouTube invited me to be a part of the YouTube partner program, which was surprising. Okay. And I said, well, that's great. Let me make some money for my family too. I'm glad that uh, I'm not able to have kids, you know, just, or give birth to them because I'd be terrified of being pregnant. So you were able to do it and, you know, <laughs> a shout out to all the women around the world that can do it because uh, like I said, I would be terrified to do it. Absolutely. <laughs> it was fun though. I mean, it was really cool to feel a child kicking in my belly and being able to sing to them and, you know, have that bond with them in the belly, being able to grow a human life. What an incredible thing to do. You know, the, the human body is just an incredible thing. At the beginning of your story, you talked about nipple confusion. So what happens to like babies that are bottle fed? Is it just easier for them to feed that way? So they don't want to do the work of breastfeeding or what happens? So the thing about nipple confusion is when a baby is first, also like this, the flow of the nipple of the bottle, no matter how slow they say the flow is, it's still not the way that the breast flows. So if a baby is introduced to formula when their tiny tummy is only a pea size, that bottle stretches their stomach. First of all, they get overfed. Um, they have a hard time latching. You know, they, they feel that the nipple is not the same as the bottle, so they don't want to work as hard to get the milk out. You know, that's another thing for sure, what you just said. So that's pretty much the nipple confusion. When they're given too many pacifiers, when they're given bottles, when they're given anything to stimulate what breastfeeding is supposed to do for the baby, it causes them to get lazy or confused about, well, which one am I supposed to drink from? And why is this nipple not giving me milk fast enough? So let me go to the bottle, cry for the bottle. They don't establish breastfeeding, and it's bad for not only the mother, it's bad for the child as well. You're giving them chemicals, not your, your God-given breast milk, if you will, if you believe in God. You know, and it's just nature. We need to get back to basics. Yeah, no, that, that's excellent. What kind of feedback did you start getting when you did your channel? Like, any of it surprising, you know, the support of good stuff? I mean, like, not the negative. You know, we could always, who wants to focus on Well, at first, what, what positive were... stuff did you get? The positive stuff that I got was incredible. I had people emailing me and leaving comments when I first started showing people how to use the pumps and how to handle nipple infections and all kinds of stuff that I've had nurses and lactation consultants and mothers, they would text me and say, God, thank you for being so open about your breast area that you could actually show us what we need to do and help us. I've had nurses say that, that I help them so much with their new patients, uh, with establishing breastfeeding and having a successful experience. I actually taught hmm. people about nipple infections that I was getting and how to fix them when they were almost impossible to heal, like slow healing nipple infections. Uh, oh. Nurses were telling me, even lactation consultants, thank you for your knowledge because we had no idea that this, you know, what we could do to fix this problem. We were having people, you know, rarely they would have people come with them with these unhealing nipples from these nipple infections from over pumping, overuse. And it was just a nightmare. So I had to step them through with all the natural products along with the prescription products that I used in order for me to actually finally heal the nipple infections that I had from pumping too much and from trying to, you know, have that exclusive breastfeeding experience or breast mm. milk experience, at least, even if it's not exclusively on the breast. I wanted my second child, especially to get only breast milk. 
Yeah. Well, where do you see, you know, new mothers or even mothers that have children already, but, are, you know, as a new one comes along, where do you see they have the problems with breastfeeding? Does it always occur like in the first few days or week? And, and what are the common problems? I think that breastfeeding needs to be established from the minute the baby is born, not necessarily the breastfeeding. But for me, in order to have a successful breastfeeding experience, what I did different with my second one uh, was when she first came out, I told the doctor, you do not cut the cord. You put her right on my chest with the amniotic fluid on her and let her lay on my chest. I did not let them bathe her for 24 hours. I did not bathe for 24 hours. When she was ready and they cut the cord, the umbilical cord, they put her on my breast, you know, on my breast area. Then we started to establish breastfeeding. What the amniotic fluid does is it actually tells the baby, this is your mom. This smells good. This is where you're supposed to eat. That's how nature is telling the baby, this is where you're supposed to eat. That is when she was able to latch on herself and you learn how to make the latch bigger so it's not painful. But I fed her, I think every two to three hours The hospital I was at was wonderful about breastfeeding. They brought her to me and then would take her either to the little daycare right like two doors down or I would have her in my room at all times. So it was just a much better experience. With my first one, they I told them that that's what I wanted. They didn't do anything on my birth plan. So Mm. they put the baby on me, but they put a towel under her and washed her off. It like Mm. gave her a bath on me. And I was in so much pain because I didn't get an epidural that I couldn't stick up for myself. I was crying. I was like, please, I'm in so much pain. The The lady had given me an episiotomy with, with no form of anesthesia whatsoever and sewed me back up. And while she's sewing me, they're trying to clean the baby on me. I'm crying. It was a mess. Like hmm. I have a very high, what is it high or low? I'm sorry. I'm getting a little confused. Pain receptors where I feel so much pain, like the littlest thing hurts me. So child, oh, like a, low, a low tolerance. On, for pain, a low, am I a low pain to threshold? First words. What was that? Yeah, you know, a low pain threshold. I guess some I people have, would call it. That's what I have. Because I mean, am I allowed to curse or have to keep it PC? No, you it can curse un- a little bit. It was unfreaking believable the amount of pain childbirth caused me mm. for my first, and just the whole. Now, now you're really experience. convincing me that I don't want to do it. You know. Yeah, it, but I mean, the epidural, the second one, my second one was induced because of the um, the diabetes, the gestational diabetes. They mm. induced her two weeks early, and everything was great. I had a wonderful doctor. You know, the baby came out with two cords wrapped around her neck, but my doctor was like, oh, look at that. Oh. It's, and I was like, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. It's okay. And he unwrapped the baby's head. Everything was fine. He didn't stress me out. I felt nothing. The epidural made me completely numb from the waist down. So it was the most happy, joy-filled birthing experience I could have ever wanted. And I wish I had had that with my first one because I think it would have been a lot different. I would have been able to stick up for myself and said, no, I want to breastfeed. Take that towel out. I wouldn't have been in so much pain that I didn't even know how to stand up for myself. I even hired a doula and she didn't even stick up for my baby for the breastfeeding or anything else. So that was like a waste of money for me. I'm sorry to hear you know, that. It's crazy. I, I know other people have had luck with that, but <laughs> I do. Yeah. What topics do you see uh, resonate the most with women nowadays, you know, like recently? Well, the over-sexualization of the breast is what is absurd to me. I mean, God made the body. If you believe in God, God made the human body. You know, God made the breast. God made the breast make the milk duct with the milk in the milk duct to feed the baby. So why is everyone so uptight about the breast? And if men, and I'm sorry, I'm very quality minded. If men can go around with their breasts or chest hanging out, then what is the problem with a woman, you know, walking around the same way, especially when the breast is made to feed a baby? There is nothing sexual about breastfeeding. And it irritates the heck out of me that, You know, anyone would even consider that when Mm. a mother is feeding her baby the way nature intended. You know, um, I know you probably have questions, but I I can dive right into it. As far as saving the planet goes, I mean, Mother Nature knows what she's doing. She gave us the opportunity to feed our babies without any plastic bags, without any electricity being used to use the pump, without any formula cans and plastic lids and toxic chemicals you know, to put into your baby that even there's a formula shortage because of all the toxicity that they were finding Mm. in the formula and recalls all the time. And yes, I know that some women are medically incapable of breastfeeding and that is fine. 
I get it. But if any woman can, they should give it their ultimate try. Like they should at least try to feed the baby the way nature intended and, you know, save the planet one bottle at a time. Plastic bottles, rubber nipples, plastic lids for the bottles. I mean, there's so much stuff that goes into these landfills from, you know, not exclusively breastfeeding as nature intended. So you can save the planet as well. <laughs> yeah, no, that's excellent. Again, like what topics seem to resonate most? Is it, you know, I know I know what you're running into, like you said, the, you know, the sexualization of what is just a natural act of breastfeeding. Right. Like what's, um, you know, what are you hearing comments from, you know, your YouTube channel, people that, uh, hey, tell us about this, or hey, can you do a video on this, that kind of stuff. See, and I don't mind teaching people. I mean, I know that some people probably are there for the wrong reasons, and that's unfortunate, but that's not my problem. I'm not going to discriminate because a male wants to learn, a female, a transgender person, anyone. I am, you know, very open-minded. If you would like to learn about the woman and the human body, being able to feed a baby the way nature intended, or how to express the milk from the breast, which has helped a lot of women, I have actually had a lot of thank yous, um, then I'm going to go for it. You know, at least if I help one person, then I did what I set out to do. And, you know, the, the negativity part about it is women coming at me even. Uh, some women are very closed-minded and think that breastfeeding should be done under a cover, like you could suffocate your baby by accident doing that. You know, it gets mm. overheated, the baby. It does. One thing about covering when you are breastfeeding is it can cause the baby to not be distracted as long as there's enough air ventilation and stuff like that. But sense, I mean, yeah. covering, why would you want to cover your head while you eat? I mean, me, why would I want my face covered while I'm, I'm eating a bowl of cereal or something? It's just people need to look at it that way and come back to nature, stop over-sexualizing the breast. As far as the women go that complain, they think that they should be, you know, behind closed doors and ashamed of breastfeeding their baby. Like they should be hiding away in a bathroom or, you know, not not being able to feed their baby out in the open because of society. And to me, that's a shame. I think that if a baby's hungry, don't wait to feed that baby till you get home. Feed the baby right then and there. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it, it's just that that's what I think. And I think that sharing this journey of my life, whether it be breastfeeding, bottle feeding, re child rearing, you know, tips and things for, for all types of situations as far as family goes. I'm just here to help families and mothers. And now I have to turn off my comments because people don't know how to behave. Certain ones have to say ridiculous, stupid, inappropriate things, which causes hmm. other people to get angry about their comment. And then it becomes a whole fight between this mommy says you're disgusting to that guy and that guy's like well this this and that and why is she posting this and i'm like you know i'd rather not hear any of the bs here's my email if you have something to say or a question to ask you email me and that's when i get the nurses and the lactation consultants and the mothers who honest to god need help and i have right. helped so many people that oh gratifying to me that i was able to help so many people as i had set out to do like that swells my heart 10 sizes you know, I want to yeah, give really back cool. to the world, and I want to give love, and I want to be loving and accepting to all humankind. So I do my best to help the planet and to be a good person and help others in whatever way I can. And if I was given this gift to be able to learn about breastfeeding myself and go through all these crazy challenges that I went through, I mean, I went through some crazy stuff with the nipple mm. infections and, like, literally, like, my nipple practically falling off from infections. Uh from pumping because of pumping it was irritating my nipple that's why i'm like mm. such an avid believer of go back to basics nature intended the baby to latch to the breast the way you're supposed to like the way right. that nature tells you to with like all the animals like you said that you see the breastfeeding you know whales and you know it's what we're supposed to do we're not supposed yeah, to years ago when uh... pump and then give our baby yeah. a bottle. You're supposed to latch that baby to your chest to get that skin to skin contact and that bonding with your child. Yeah. Years ago when, um, you know, when, when my kids were little, my wife breastfed them, she said like, you know, if her breast ever got, uh, I guess the milk couldn't come out, you know, the milk got stuck. I don't know what the term is, but, but she oh, would say like, milk duct. Clog clog, milk yeah. Duct, usually, yeah. She said uh, the baby would be able to clear that better than any pump. They're like amazing <laughs> at it, you know, and it's natural. true. Oh, go yeah, ahead. So I'm that sorry. Was really cool. <laughs> Yeah, and you just lean well, forward. If you want to clog, unclog a milk duct, you lay the baby on the floor. And this this also, oh, my gosh, 
blows up is, oh, this is a sexual thing. No, it's not freaking, oh, I want to curse. <laughs> I get so freaking angry about that. But like, you know, lay the baby on the ground and you you hover over them with the breast like hanging using gravity to take the, you know, milk duct. And then the baby <laughs> does ex express the milk from the breast. It comes out like that and that's, and then massage it into you know, where the baby is nursing and it will come out. It will unplug the milk duct, a little bit of a hot compress and you're good to go. And it saves pain and all sorts, you know, sorts of other problems. Also, I wanted huh. to say, um, uh, people that bottle feed, even if you also pump, another thing you have to remember is these bottles, even if it's not, if it doesn't, if it says BPA free, it's still plastic and plastic still has some sort of chemical that they had to make that plastic with. So when you're heating up that bottle, you're heating up chemicals into your breast milk that's in that plastic bottle to feed your baby out of a bottle because you don't want to take the time to feed from your breast. Or you can't. I get it, the women who have to go back to work. I understand. But remember, that's also poison that you're giving your child. So, like, people yeah, there's, realize. Uh, there's, yeah, a lot, yeah. You know, plastics can leach into the breast milk, and there's microplastics and all kinds of stuff here. Ends up in the ocean, <laughs> filling our ocean life, and that's our food source. That's a big food source mm. for us. With you know, even if you're vegan, you know, vegans eat a lot of you know the seaweed and things from the you know from the sea. So I mean, there's yeah. a lot of this huge ocean filled of food, and we're screwing up our food sources. What's um, so, uh, you know, I'm sure you're more aware even than I am, far more aware. But uh, the baby formula shortage. What what did you do while that's been in the news and what kind of comments or questions, calls for help did you get from people? Well, I didn't actually. Um, I did post something on TikTok, just kind of like a parody, kind of be like, what What now for all you, you know, people, I don't want to say anything rude, but all you people that don't believe in breastfeeding or think it's sexual, what about you now? What, what's going on now? Oh, you don't have your precious formula. What now? To the people that mm. didn't at least give it a try. You know, and I mean, it, I mean, it was kind of like a jokey kind of thing, but it's not a joke. I mean, it's it's a serious thing. I mean, this is yeah. scary for people that can't physically breastfeed or, or have medical issues or whatever. Whatever happened to wet nurses? You know, they do have the milk mm. banks and stuff, you know, that process the milk and everything else. But gosh, wouldn't it be cool to have a hospital that hired a bunch of lactating mothers? I mean, this is a good idea, I think. Hire a bunch of lactating mothers, drug test them, do every kind of test to make sure that their milk is 100% safe, that they're eating a healthy diet. You have them live right. there while they're right. feeding the babies. You know what I mean? If that's what they want to do, they want to help these newborns and things, have that. Because the skin-to-skin -skin contact is huge. That oxytocin that gets released between the mother and baby is huge for the development of the child. It also yeah. helps the mother with postpartum depression and things like that. So why can't we hire a bunch of wet nurses that can feed these babies when the mommy can't? You know, why can't that be yeah. a service that a lactating mother offers? People used to give their babies to wet nurses because they didn't want to be bothered with breastfeeding. But the wet nurse breastfed, the wet nurse breastfed that baby and it was fine. It was acceptable. What happened right. to that? Like, we're going back. Yeah, no, I, my, that uh, was my the dark worked. ages. And we were a lot more like we were a lot more intelligent back then, I feel. <laughs> yeah, my wife was born and grew up in Africa. And she said in, the, in some oh, of the amazing. tribes, they'll, you know, the, the other mothers will help out. When the you know the the original mother can't breastfeed, so they'll they'll do exactly what you said. There's no problem. I com I completely believe in that. And I I mean, if you'd like, I actually had my friend wet nurse my child. I had undergone a so one time I had undergone a surgical um, operation while I was breastfeeding my second one, and she was exclusively breastfed, no bottles, nothing. And I had pumped. I mean, no, she had bottles occasionally. I'd pumped, and we were out at a party just a little birthday party and my girlfriend came and she's a breastfeeding mom too. I ran out of the formula that I had pumped ahead of time because I couldn't breastfeed for three days after the procedure because of the anesthesia in my body. She actually okay. offered to breastfeed my daughter and did successfully because my baby was hungry. And I said, I don't mind, please. And people, wow, the response I got about that. What? That's gross. Why would you let you know, your friend breastfeed your baby. First of all, I know she's drug free. I know she's vegan and eats a very healthy diet, even probably better than I eat. And I was totally comfortable with her because we've been friends for years and she was still breastfeeding her toddler at the time. So I felt very you comfortable know you know having her wet nurse like, my child. Well, you know, what's funny is that, a you know, a kid of, let's say, two, three, a parent would probably take them to McDonald's and, you know, not blink an eye. And to have your friend breastfeed once, they can't even be nearly as bad as that. So what's the big deal? 
I agree completely. I have been the mom that took the mom, took the kid to McDonald's, though. Shame on me. I know. But she does get breast milk. She at least gets breast milk. So, you know, also, uh, one more thing I wanted to, I mean, I don't know. Do you have any other questions for me? Because I was going to talk about baby led weaning. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Sure. So I believe in baby led weaning as well. This is another thing that people are way uptight about. How can you let your seven-year-old drink from your breast? That's got to be something sexual. That is freaking disgusting. Absolutely it's not. Do you know that most cultures breastfeed till even the age of nine and 10? Like, hmm. like, I mean, not, I, I want to say not openly as much because like, oh, society thinks it's wrong. I know so many people that have said, oh, I breastfed my daughter till I was seven. Even friends of mine that, that when I can't tell anybody about that, I won't mention any names, of course. But I mean, right. why? Why can't we tell the world? Yes, I want to feed my toddler. Yes, I want to feed my child. The best thing that they can have nutrient-wise gives them all those antibodies, all that wonderful bonding between mother and child. It is absolutely not sexual in any way. And it's just a, a that mothers should be able to provide to their children. Now, as far as baby led weaning goes, my, my friend that I'm talking about that fed her daughter till she was seven said when she was seven, she decided that mommy, I don't want to, I don't want to drink your milk anymore. I'm good. I just want to eat regular food. And her mom said, that's fine. And that was baby led weaning. That child decided that that was when she was done. My four-year-old, when she barely turned five, she decided she was done. She doesn't ask for the rest anymore. I don't offer it. You know, we just decided we were done. And that's when she decided that she no longer wanted to breastfeed. Oh, that's the thing. I also wanted to tell you that when my second baby was born, my first child was uh, two years old. And remember, she was having problems breastfeeding. She wanted formula. She wanted to go back to the breast because of jealousy. So I was able to provide her with all the nutrients and all the wonderful things that I couldn't provide her with when she was born. So I was very excited about that. It was it made me very happy that she decided to go back to breastfeeding after not breastfeeding for almost two years. I mean, she did a little bit, but it was so minute that my milk didn't even come in very well at that point. Yeah. Why do you what are some of the top reasons you think that that women don't breastfeed? Is Are they pressured not to or are they just. They try to give uh, up too easily, or the what do you think? It doesn't do the right thing, or they don't know what to do when they first give birth, or maybe it's because they had a C-section and the hospital took the baby away and wouldn't let them go right on their chest right after. I, I think that you have to have a birth plan. You have to research your hospital or your birthing center, or whatever you're going to do, to make sure that it's right for you and that they follow what you want. Um, I believe that it's a pain in the ASS. It is a pain. It is a lot of work, and if you're not willing to dedicate yourself to that work of your milk coming in and feeding your baby every two hours, you know, it's hard. It is hard, and I got to give kudos to any mom that stuck through it and, and got through it, um, especially like I did after my second, because I tell you, if I had had to go back to a normal job, I don't know if I would have been this successful in breastfeeding, and I probably would have pumped for a long time and still had nipple infections, but it's hard. Mm. And, you know, women just want to give up very easy. But, I mean, this is my child. I'm not going to give up on my child. I want to do whatever I can to give them the best head start that I possibly can. And that's how I feel. But also, if hospitals don't bring the baby to you every two hours or if the latch is, is not, if it's shallow or maybe even if the baby has a lip tie and there's a medical issue where the baby can't successfully breastfeed from the source, that's a whole nother thing, you know, uh, then I, I get why women decide not to, not to breastfeed, or at least they can try. They can do other sorts of things like pumping, you know. Well, do, do, have you seen that, that women give up and just go to formula, or do they do pumping Some first, do. or do they, do they pump and then mix it into the formula? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you see people Some do? do? Oh, you know, a big thing that I have heard about women, um, the mm -hmm. reason they stop, they discontinue breastfeeding either too early or they just don't try is because of the pain that is associated with it as well, because you get that engorged breast. You can get mastitis, and mastitis, if left untreated, it can kill you. It can kill oh, someone. Geez. So, like, yeah, mastitis is where, like, um, there's, like, an infection of the breast milk because it's not getting out fast enough. Like, the, it, the baby's not removing enough milk. So it gets mm. trapped in there. And, you know, like any milk, you sit it in the fridge, you put it outside for too long, and it sours. So it can literally sour and not medically... I've never been taught this, but this is what I believe. So I, I could be a little bit wrong about how it develops. But I feel that like it's like the milk souring. If it doesn't get out fast enough, it can cause a breast infection. And uh, bacteria from the baby's mouth can also get up in the nipple 
and cause that mastitis infection as well. So you need mm. that antibiotic to get rid of the infection and you need to hand express or get a certain amount of milk out to relieve that pain from mastitis. So if you are a woman and you're experiencing any painful, like um, shooting pain sensations in your breast, one or both, go see your doctor right away because it could be mastitis and you could possibly need like life-saving antibiotics so that it doesn't get too bad. Oh, wow. you know, if, if you can't clear it up, but always, always consult a doctor. Lactation consultants actually are very well educated on that subject. So they might be able to help you even better than a doctor could, but still always consult your doctor. You know, we don't ever want to tell someone not to go to their doctor. That makes sense. I think that's why women give up, you know, that pain, that, 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 oh my gosh, if I got mastitis, I could die. You know, there's all these things about breastfeeding that you have to really do your research and learn mm. about it and know what you're doing and talk to the lactation consultant and watch a bunch of moms breastfeed their babies like as much as you possibly can to see how it's done see how they move the lips you know so that the breast um, or so that the latch is better you know learn from all these other mommies that have gone through it or are going through it with you so that you'll know what to do when you first give birth and you'll have the best possible experience feeding your baby in whatever way you decided to feed your baby and you'll at least yeah, know no, about awesome. formula. You'll know about what you need to do. Oh okay, yeah, what I was going to ask you: What topics um, are you going to be focusing on in the near future? Now, like, what do you see that there's a need for, or is it just there's so much you still have to do around breastfeeding? Well, as far keep doing as that? Me, my baby just turned three. I call her. She's still my baby. Uh, she just turned three, and she is a breast milk girl, though. She told me the other day, and I posted it on my thing. She goes, "If you, it, it, she would never punch me for real, but it was just funny what comes out of a toddler's mouth. She goes, Mommy, if you don't give me the booby because I was busy cleaning, if you don't give me the booby right now, I'm going to punch you in the face, she said. <laughs> and I said, say that again. And I started filming it. She goes, I'm going to punch you. I'm going to punch you in the face. You don't give me the booby. Like so booby, she, booby terrorism, right? Yeah, so she, <laughs> that's awesome, booby terrorism. Can I use that? That's so cute. Sure. So, yeah, yeah she, she seriously, she loves breast milk. She loves the closeness and the bond, and I don't think she's going to give it up anytime soon. And I forgot what question you asked me. I'm sorry. Oh, that's where are we going like, with um, that? Oh. Yeah, where, where, where's, where's your channel headed in terms of topics, you know, of the next six months? Like, my do you have a, other ones always, you want to do? My, my channel's always been, like, about me and my family. So, basically, I like to do a lot of family vlogs. But, like, I like to do family vlogs, travel vlogs. I kind of have, like, an all-encompassing channel. It's just about me, like, the famous mommy and my family, what I do every day, like, where I take my family on vacation. We are actually moving to Mexico, and now I want to try to help people that, want to move to Mexico that are American or that are from another country, what they have to do to get a green card, how you have to go about applying to be able to live in Mexico for any period of time that's longer than what they allow when you come on vacation. Um, I want to help them with like places to live, where you should try to buy, what's the cheapest housing, what's the most expensive housing areas, um, what's the safest areas to live in within the Mexi within Mexico and the places that we live. Uh, because we actually might be moving there for a few years. The housing market has gone up so high in our area that we would like to sell the home put the money away if we can and uh, just hold on to it and hope that if the market does crash, we can come back and buy a house cash and not have to work anymore if we don't want to, you know, oh, it's wow. something we don't have to provide for our family because we already have the house paid for. We can work a simple job or do some simple things to pay the property taxes, etc. Okay. For people that find you, they just go to YouTube and put in the famous mommy. Um, any other ways they can interact with you like do you have a website or anything or is it all i'm actually the famous mommy.com it has all of my social okay. media accounts anything that you could possibly think of i have also a patreon it's uh, patreon.com backslash the famous mommy that has most of all of my educational breastfeeding and pumping and videos of that nature to help mommies and families with that particular subject. I started kind of going off of YouTube because of, like I said, all the issues with like the monetization and things where, you know, the fighting and the comments and stuff. So I figure if people are there and they want to learn about breastfeeding or they want to learn about pumping, they want to learn about lactation, milk, nipple infections and all of that stuff, they can go on my patron um, and join me there. And then they can ask any question that they want as long as it is educational purposes only. They can ask any question they want and get the help that they need through my patron page. Well, that's great. And okay. that also, you know, helps me support my family and everything else. So I thank you for that. No problem. Well, it was really great to meet you. And, uh, you know, 
listeners, if they find this uh, interesting or useful, you know, go to the Famous Mommy on YouTube or thefamousmommy.com. And, and thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. It was really a pleasure speaking with you as well today. If you like this podcast, please click the link in the description to subscribe and review us on iTunes. You've been listening to the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. If you like what you hear, be sure to review and subscribe to the Finding Genius Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And want to be smarter than everybody else? Become a premium member at FindingGeniusPodcast.com. This podcast is for information only. No advice of any kind is being given. Any action you take or don't take as a result of listening is your sole responsibility. Consult professionals when advice is needed.